Nigeria, Cameroon, Ethiopia, and Iran. My name is Adriel Lucky, and I'll be the moderator of this event. It's such a huge pleasure to see each and every one of you present here tonight. It shows that indeed there are true people who are passionate about seeing the world become a better place. This project is one of its kind, and we are working to ensure that we find solutions to the problems that affect us directly as young people. So I am so glad to see each one of you here and I want to say welcome. At this juncture, I would like to introduce you to our speakers. Um, I want to give honor to women with you, starting with the founder of A Billion Doors Initiative, Her Excellency Ambassador Farida Ali Adamu. It's so good to see you tonight, Ma. Thank you for bursting this vision. You are an inspiration to young people all over the world. And this platform is definitely maximizing the potentials of young people. We are honored to have you. She will be speaking to us to give us an overview of what this project is about. And then later on, she would be introducing to us our interns. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight, Ma. We also have the country director, Action Aid Nigeria. Ms. Ene Obi, she should be joining us soon. She's not here with us now, but I'm sure she'll join us very soon. Action Aid is at the forefront of poverty alleviation, achieving social justice and gender equality here in Nigeria through our numerous programs. She'll be speaking to us about substance abuse, and I particularly cannot wait to hear what she has in store for us. So Ms. Ene Obi, we hope you join us soon. We look forward to having you here with us. And then we also have the Honorable Commissioner for Land, Housing, Urban Development, and Regional Planning, Jigawa State, Nigeria, Honorable Sagir Musa Akhmed. He's not here, but I'm sure he'll be joining us anytime from now. He'll be speaking to us about 
very sure he'll be bringing um, a whole lot of goodies as regards to that subject. So we look forward to having you join us here also tonight, sir. Not to forget, we have a very interesting personality also joining us here tonight. She is the United Nations Youth Representative, and she is no other than Her Excellency Aisha Waya Narasim Hadavera. I hope I pronounced that correctly, ma. Um, she's not also here, but I'm sure she should be joining us again anytime soon. She'll be speaking to us about the Sustainable Development Goal, and that is very important because everything we do revolves around the SDGs. We are literally standing on the Sustainable Development Goal. So we believe she'll be joining us tonight. Of course, you understand that they all have busy schedules. They have to clear up, but we expect them to join us here tonight. Before I proceed, please, can every one of us mute our mic so we avoid any background noise? Can you mute our mic, please, every person? Please? Abu, Abu Meina, please can you mute your mic? We are trying to avoid as um, much noise as possible. <coughs> yes, I can see Ms. Aisha Waya. She's here with us right now. Thank you so much for joining us, Ma. It feels so good to have you here with us tonight, Ma. So I'm going to proceed. We also have joining us here, we have His Excellency Ambassador Zakari Gimba Hassan. He'll be speaking to us about a billion dollars initiative, more or less giving us an overview of what this organization is about. What do we do? Why do we do what we do? You know, so I'm sure you would want to love to hear from him. Ambassador Zakari, I'm sure you're here with us. You're welcome. And then I want to also especially welcome our interns from Nigeria. Cameroon, Ethiopia, and Iran. You are the true change makers. You've come this far and that makes you special. You are exceptional and you're the reason you're gathered here tonight. So thank you for joining us tonight. You are welcome, welcome, and welcome. And to all of the ambassadors, I see you, other other back advocates and um, invitees. Thank you for participating with us here tonight. You are highly welcome. I bet I can say that we're going to have a good time. So without much ado, I'm going to proceed to our first item on the agenda. And that will be an overview of the project regulatory policies for drug abuse and domestic violence. What exactly is it our interns would be working on? What, what is the project about? What are our expectations? All this and more we expect to hear tonight. And no one else will do this better than Her Excellency Ambassador Farida Ali Adamu. Ma, it's so good to have you here tonight. I'm hoping you can hear me. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Thank you so much. Good um, to have you um, here, Ma. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Ambassador. Yes, you, by um, the way, I have to say that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good evening. Um, good evening. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, um, uh, everyone. Good evening, Miss Ob, Country Director for Action Aid Nigeria. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency, Honorable Sagir Ahmed, Honorable Commissioner Landhausen, Urban Development and Regional Planning, Jigawa State. Thank you so much for making out time for this um, historic event. Uh, Your Excellency Ashwarya Narishim Hadavera, UN Youth Representative, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I can't wait to hear you speak. Uh, a billion doors, ambassadors, advocates, interns, our distinguished um, guest, thank you all and welcome. So I would like to begin by uh, just giving us an overview of what this internship project is all about. So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to conduct study 
on the drivers of drug abuse and the existing protocol in Nigeria, Ethiopia, Cameroon, and Iran in treating victims of substance abuse. And we are also conducting a study on how domestic violence is connected to crime and terrorism in Nigeria, Cameroon, Iran, and Ethiopia. So really what I want to, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the background of all of this is that uh, you see in Africa, uh, very little attention is given to mental health issues. Drug abuse and violence don't only affect uh, our physical well-being, but they also affect our mental health, you know, and um these mental consequences go a really long way in, um, determine, in determining what um, makes up the society. Uh, because this problem doesn't remain the problem of the abuser or the abused, but it also extends to our communities and the societies and in turn the world. A lot of young people suffer from addiction of all sorts, from as low as cigarettes to as high as cocaine. Do you think the nature of this slavery is one that imprisons a, a young person and um, uh, it could be uh, due to peer pressure, <clears throat> due to depression, uh, as a consequence of abuse or trauma from home or from the society. It could be uh, due to uh, losing someone very close to you. It could be due to boredom, trauma, financial burdens, isolation, and also availability. But every demographic has a peculiar driver. And in this instance, we're looking at drug abuse amongst the youth, women, and children. So really in this research, we're going to ask um, questions as with any research, we are going to try to find out who abuses the drugs and um, what drives them to abuse the drugs. Uh, also, we're going to try to find out is drug abuse best handled at personal, local or the federal level. And we'll take a look at what resources are, are available to drug abuse users and the best practice to help them. For violence, we are going to be looking and asking questions such as um, uh, what are the consequences of untreated victims of domestic violence? Because you see very little is done to support those that have been faced trauma, especially young people that um, face abuse or some kind of maltreatment, you know, at home from a very young age, you know, very little is done. Uh, in Africa to um, kind of give them a rehabilitation before they come out into the society. So we are going to look at existing remedies in treating victims of violence and we are together going to devise sustainable uh, solutions to that. So in the end of it all, we are going to build a connection between drug abuse and domestic violence and vice versa. So uh, the, 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 this internship, you know, it seeks to address goal 16.2, goal 5, uh, goal 3.5, and goal 4 of the SDGs. Uh, uh, our guest speaker, um, Her Excellency Ashwarya, is going to give us an overview and a detailed analysis of what the SDGs are all about. So I won't go into that much detail. But as long as this internship is concerned, uh, interns will gain a, multifaced, um, ultim a multifaceted understanding of social vice, in this instance, violence and drug abuse. They will conduct a study within their community and propose solutions from their perspective. Uh, you will be able to devise solutions and um, uh, these solutions will span between violence and um, drug abuse. So what are the um, research methodologies we're going to use? We are going to use questionnaires, we are going to interview, and we're going to use case studies. So uh, uh, next I'm going to talk about um, the output, you know, from, from this internship, uh, the output for drug abuse. 
So uh, number one, uh, identification of new sustainable and attainable and accessible methods to treating victims of drug abuse. Victims, we are talking about women, children, and the youth in rural settings and urban settings. We are going to obtain data that will add value to achieving the SDGs. We are going to um, uh, use this um, platform to increase awareness um, on the UN SDGs and the youth involvement in the decade of action. We are going to try to close the, <clears throat> the knowledge gap amongst young people on drug use and its generational consequences. Uh, also, um, we are going to raise awareness on drug abuse across individuals, domestic settings and communities. And most importantly, we are going to identify drug abusers and confidentially find them help that they need. Uh, this largely depends on the funding and um, their ability to come forward. So uh, now we're going to move on to the project internship output for violence. We are going to establish a relationship between exposure to violence as a child and terrorism. We're going to raise awareness. Uh, and in that process, we're trying to break the generational impact of violence against women and children and young people. Uh, we are going to identify new sustainable, attainable and accessible methods of preventing and treating victims of violence. So overall, the project outcome is going to be establishing a community-based recovery center for all demographics that are enslaved to substance abuse or are victims of violence. So what happens after you um, graduate after 90 days? Uh, when you graduate, you become a fellow of Billion Doors Initiative. You become a diplomatic fellow and a scholar of um, a Billion Doors Initiative, and you will have full rights to use the title DF Abdi after your name. And you have the option to stop right there, or you can proceed and become advocates or ambassadors. When you become an advocate, you receive a mandate from us, and um, this will allow you to work at community level in the areas of peace building and drug abuse prevention. And um, your mandate will include things uh, such as raising awareness, um, sensitization at peer level, and obviously uh, you will report to us. Uh, the exciting part of this is that your voices will be heard on a global scale because everything you do and uh, everything you have done will be submitted to the UN ECOSOC, uh, which we're trying to get into a partnership with. So um, this is really the end of my presentation on the 2021-2022 Diplomatic Internship on Drug Abuse and uh, Violence. I will come back again after um, um, after Her Excellency Ashwarya to introduce the interns. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Her Excellency. This sure sounds like a, a promising initiative and we are super glad to be a part of this. I am sure our interns are already super excited to be a part of this already. Definitely, we really know that drug abuse is a problem and it's becoming prevalent, especially in African countries. And truth to your words, it's not being given enough attention because we know that a lot of youth do not have as much information as they should as regarding the consequences of drug abuse. And then like you already pointed out the relationship between drug abuse and domestic violence. That is key because it's those people who are the victims of drug abuse that end up going back home and then abusing either their, their partners or you know, families or whoever they are. So that, that's key. And then I also particularly love the part where you mentioned the solution 
a community-based recovery center that is on a zero approach, and I am certain it's going to yield tremendous results. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for that remarkable presentation. Okay, at this moment, I would like to remind each and every participant to please mute your microphones. I'm hearing background noise. Please do not need that. Can we just, you know, take out a moment to mute our mic? Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have the country director, Action Aid Nigeria, Ms. Ene Obi. Uh, she should be speaking to us about substance abuse. You know, this, this goes further to show how important this subject is in this day and time. And I believe she's going to do justice to this topic. So without waiting any further time, um, I would like to welcome the country director, Ms. Ene Obi, to give us a speech on substance abuse. Hello, Ma. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good to see you, Ma. How are you doing? I am good, and yourselves? Well I'm done. Very fine. I'm very fine. Thank you, Ma. It's a pleasure to have you. You know you have to play your schedule to make our time to do it all tonight, you. so we do not take that for granted. So, Ma, Thank you so would much. you like to speak to us on um, substance abuse? We would love to hear from you, Ma. Okay, thank you very much. I am sorry that I joined a bit late. I'm just coming in straight from um, uh, Makodi, where we have some IDPs where we had to carry out some interventions. I tried to get here early, but uh, traffic in Maraba massacre for those who know Abuja, you know, just didn't allow me. But uh, given the importance of this uh, process, I thought whatever it is, I will run in to see. Um, if I can say one or two things. I have I drove in straight to my office because I know when I go home, my grandson will hold me and uh, that will be it. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, actually, thank Nigeria, you, uh, you know, <laughs> Good evening, welcome. Thank you for making our time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, Her Excellency and the team that put this together, you know, for all you have done. I know what you have been trying to do, um, working with the young people. Uh, call for us, uh, actually in Nigeria, one of the things that this one touches in is that uh, we work with young people. Young people are one of the core area that we work on. Again, women, women and girls. And this subject from where you were ending up as I was joining on the violence against women and girls, you know, the issues, the relationship between, uh, you know, this substance, drug abuse and violence, gender-based violence is very profound. It's very, very pronounced everywhere. And COVID-19 also brought that down, you know, home to us. Uh, in terms of when you are looking at it, so many things that uh, the Nigerian children have been confronted with. The young people in Nigeria, they've been confronted with a lot. Uh, but that uh, we have the NDLEA, which is the Nigerian Drug Enforcement Agency, Drug Law Enforcement Agency, so have NAPDAC controls, you know, which is charged with the responsibility of the of drug abuse and the issues of substance, and uh, we have uh, the tobacco management consumption, you know, level issues in policies and so on. The, where do we start from? Where is the root cause of some of the things we're talking about? And where, you know, uh, they say an idle mind is a, is a devil's workshop. And so one of the three things that one will pick up, yes, do you have time? Many of you on this call, many of you, you don't have time because you're very, very busy. And some of you have time. When you have time, then you can have, you'll be able to uh, explore certain things in life. When there is frustration, also that time takes you to another level. There is so much. There is a lot of drug that is on the open space. Is it through black market? You know, issues of substance abuse. In terms of, a lot has been covered. And uh, studies show that one in every four women use the 
Others also show that they, for the young people, the population of the young people, about 50% of young people are exposed to the substance. I, 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 there's a place that I stay and I see, I see young people coming to stand, you know, and taking substance every evening. I don't have, there's no law against once you are an adult, you can't go, they are not causing any harm, but when I see them, my heart breaks because I don't know what uh, the circumstances, you know, or what, what they're taking, you know, will result to. And so the question of drug abuse, you know, has to do with the time. A lot of time, I believe, that one has in, on, on their hands. And that is why when you connect uh, gender-based violence, increase in COVID-19, because men and, men and women were locked in together. You know, so a lot of frustrations here and there. The issues of unemployment, we must not, you know, over that. What is the plan of the Nigerian government for the young people of Nigeria? What is the investment you know, plan for the young people of Nigeria? We are churning out more than 4 million young people every year. Why are we doing that? From the NYC camp, from different environments, the, the ones that are graduating every year. And don't forget that though a lot of them, millions are going into the universities, that jam will not take both male and female where do they stop and so you have a lot of things you know we have a a, 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 a a sort of volume of young people that are not doing anything and so it's a source of concern and so many cases have been raised some friends and colleagues development partners that i've talked to if you go to the reality i wish i had time to be able to bring out some data but if you go to the reality of the use of substance in Nigeria, you will not be able to sit on your seat. And so I'm happy that uh, UNODC is part of this, you know, and I hope we can take it to the next level uh, for working with the young people, activista. We hope that we we'll use our platform to educate young people against the use of this substance. And I hope that uh, working together and looking at the, the field of young people, we need to hold people responsible. We have, we have NDLEA there. What are they doing in terms of education? National Orientation Agency is another area that we need to look at. What are they doing in terms of public enlightenment against you know, what we have? And then when you throw in poverty, there's a lot that the women are confronted with. There's so many things that they chat that I've had with uh, male colleagues on some of the frustrations that the young girls are going through you know, is also another way that we need to look at. So we are all in this together because Nigeria is sitting on the time bomb and someone who takes a substance can become as violent as anything. Once a substance goes off the eyes, oh, I'm sorry, did I do that? And so what kind of society are we creating? And so I just want to draw our attention that while, you know, I'm really, really uh, excited that there is going to be, you know, some internship, some young people are going to be able to you know, look at uh, what is going on and they will learn and also share their experiences because the world, if we don't involve young people to talk to young people, we'll be talking to ourselves because they say he who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. So I celebrate you all for bringing this up and uh, I may not be coordinated enough, but I, I think it's just to say that substance abuse is very, very dangerous. It is condemning our society but the government of the day, we are not doing a lot in terms of investing in the human capital, which is our youth today. And you can see that children, they have been at home for how long now? Asu has been on strike for almost a year. And we are just going to go out. Where do they get off from? And also in this, we need to look at the question of the poor, the very, very poor people. And this is so you provide a room for harvesting criminals or harvesting people who would have otherwise utilized themselves. So I believe in Nigeria and I believe that we have, um, we, we have an engine room for development. While other people are looking for population, the biggest level of our population, which is six, about, about 62 point something percent, that is the youth population. And these are very young people. That's your engine room. How are we harnessing their energy? You know, these are the things that will confront and I hope that we learn, you know, the young people when they take off, but we will be there also to make our contributions. Thank you very much.
Wow. Thank you so much, Ms. Enya Obi. What a wake-up call. That was amazing. One in four women, youth substance, and then 50% of our youth. We are definitely speaking on a time bomb, like you already mentioned. It's a wake-up call, definitely. And we really look forward to you know, moving on from here and working with as many partners as possible to ensure that this problem is being tackled. And then, like you rightly mentioned, it's he who wears the shoes and knows where he pinches. So we believe that this internship program is really going to be successful because then you have youth taking up the challenge and responsibility of engaging other youth and making them see the reason why they should stop the habit of substance abuse. We know that it's a, it's, it's a serious you know, task, but then we are up to the task. We are ready for that. And we believe that with dedicated people like you, yes, the sky is the limit. Thank you so much for that awesome presentation, Ma. <laughs> we are really grateful. Thank you. And please try and get enough rest after now because <laughs> Listen we know for a that while. we need you. Thank you. I will you, listen Ma. for a while. Thank you so thank much. You, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Is there any question I can take? Right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. So going on from here, we're going to have our next speaker. Yes, and this promises to be really, really interesting because this time we are having an amazing speaker speak about a very, very sensitive topic, and that is violence. You know, I particularly am really excited because I want to have a different perspective on this issue. And so coming from him, I, I have a lot of expectations, you know. So the next speaker is going to be the Honorable Commissioner for Land, Housing, Urban Development, and Regional Planning, Jigawa State, Nigeria, the person of Honorable Sagir Musa Ahmed. Sir, we are so delighted to see you tonight. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, how are you doing? I trust you had a and, great day. Yes, I had a very busy day. Actually, I traveled from Jigawa. I just arrived Kaduna at, oh. about, quarter, at about quarter to seven. Wow. So, wow. So, so without taking much of your time, I would like to stand on the existing protocol to welcome everybody that had the opportunity to join this very wonderful program. And I would like to use this opportunity to commend the effort of this very vibrant and distinguished team. Bureau of Public you, Diplomatic Affairs has been doing very, very, very well. And I must commend you. And more importantly, I want to commend you by okay. having the foresight to come with this very important topic. Regulatory policy for drug abuse and domestic violence is very timely. And I think the, the, the last speaker has done very well. She has been able to talk on very sensitive issues that have really broadened our understanding of what drug abuse is all about mm -hmm. and how we can be able to contribute in minimizing the effect of drug abuse among our youth. So my topic is violence. And I want to use this opportunity to tell this, pub this gathering, violence is a very relative term. When you talk of violence, many things come to mind, armed robbery, political violence, communal violence, toggery, and what have you. But many fail to recognize the primary form of violence, which is the mm. domestic mm. violence. This kind of abundant violence leads to our society deteriorating, and it causes a lot of violence. And one thing that I want us to mm. understand, mm. as far as I'm concerned, linking the two topic together, bringing mm. drug abuse mm. and domestic violence, I would like to look at the impact on domestic violence on children. Many children live in a home where domestic violence occurs and living in such environment is recognized as harmful to their well-being. This harm is often lasts long and it has a lot of impact and effect to many children around the world. So the impact of domestic violence on children can come in many ways. It made many of young people to become so aggressive and also so far from depression and anxiety. And that cause a lot in terms of giving them the opportunity to engage in unhealthy situations that can lead to drug abuse. So do less well at school than other children because of the difficulties at home or the destruction caused by moving to one 
environment to another. And I think violence has been a very, very serious issue that we need to look at it domestically. And as a result of this domestic violence happening at many homes, children normalize the violence and it has a negative effect on their well-being. So I want us to use this opportunity to look at the importance of domestic violence. And the more we reduce domestic violence at home, the more likely we have a better children coming up with a very, very, very good attitude that will save the world in terms of violence. As I said earlier, violence is going on left, right, and center at home nowhere. So that's what I want to contribute. And I want us to look at domestic violence is also significant in terms of health issues, not only for those who experience it directly, but also for many children living in home where it occurs. And I want us to really see how we can be able to minimize domestic violence in many homes, because the better we have healthy environment at home, the better we have a children that we can be able to be proud of and they can be able to learn best practice at home and be able to be a good citizens wherever they are at schools, wherever they are, once they have models as in parent teachers and certainly the society will be better and the level of violence will be able to go low in the society. So I think I want to stop here and I don't want to take much of our time. And the bottom line I want to conclude my discussion is domestic violence is a form of violence that is often being neglected and it causes a lot of effect in the society and it leads to many violence that we see politically, economically, wherever. If we can be able to minimize domestic violence, certainly we will be able to have a healthy society and the children will be able to learn best practice at home and they can be able to be good ambassadors of their families at school, at workplace, wherever they find themselves. Thank you, everyone. And I would like to stop here. Thank you so much, Honorable. We are grateful. We know that you're stressed out, but you shouldn't need our time to be here with us tonight. Thank you so much, sir. That was amazing. The impact of domestic violence on our society indeed cannot be overemphasized. It cannot be overemphasized. And then we know that the victims are often women and girls who suffer at the hands of intimate partners, family members. So this issue really needs to be trashed because it keeps growing by the day. And the more we do not talk about it, the worse it's going to become. So thank you so much, Sab. We really look forward to um, working with you, even as we leave the office to, you know, cause the changes that we all there to see. Thank you, Honorable. We are grateful. We are really grateful. Thank you so much, sir. And um, our audience, mind you, if you have questions, you can always leave them in the chat box. You can leave your questions, and after um, the course of the program, would attend them. Please take notes and ask your questions. Okay, so we proceed now to the next item on our agenda, and that will be the introduction of our interns. Wow, I am super glad and I'm super excited because I want to see the faces of these change makers. I want to know who they are and where they're from. I'm sure you are looking forward to you know knowing them too. So no other person to do justice that then the Honorable, sorry, than Her Excellency herself, Ambassador Farida Ali Adamun. Ma, we look forward to having you here. Introduce our intent to us, Ma. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, um, uh, Ambassador Ejoro. Thank you so much for um, introducing me back again. I would like to thank um, uh, my mentor, my my everything, uh, Ms. Edna Obi, uh, Country Director Action Aid. Uh, thank you so much, you know, for making out time um, out of your busy schedule to grace this occasion. Thank you once again. Thank you so much um, for everything, for all the support, you know. Thank you so much, Honorable Sagir Ahmed. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. I know how busy it is you know, in the government house and everything, but thank you for making out time to be here with us today. So I wouldn't want to take too much of your time. I'll just proceed um, by introducing our interns. Um, I am going to pull on uh, each and everyone's name. And when I do so, just unmute your mic and your video and just say uh, your name and um, 
where you're dialing in from and we're going to do that for everyone so i'm going to begin with um hussein at so so hussein at so so are you here with us today Hussein at so so okay nanju danjuma nanju danjuma are you here with us yes i am here I'm here. Okay, uh, I, I want to apologize. It's a little bit dark. Uh, uh, my name is Dan Juma Nanjul. I'm dialing in from Joss Plateau State, and it's a pleasure to be given this opportunity. And I'm willing to serve and and give my all to attaining the goals of this this organization. Thank you, ma. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. Ma. Thank you, Dan and yes, Juma. Um, Elizabeth Onu, yes, Elizabeth Onu, are you here? Elizabeth Onu, I think I did see Elizabeth. Yes. Oh, I think she's having network issues. Yes, she is. Okay. Mohsin Ahmadi, are you here? Good we can't hear you, Elizabeth. It's okay. We know you're here. But we can't hear you. Your network is Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you. Ahmadi, Mohsin Ahmadi, are you here? Mohsin Ahmadi. Yeah, this is my Emmanuel Adams. Okay, I didn't call you just yet. Mihiret Walegne. Mihiret Walegne, are you here? Mihiret Walegne. Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you just tell us your name, where you're dialing in from, and just the word? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Here at, we can hear I'm you. Tiling, I'm from, yeah. Okay, welcome, Meheret. Nice to have you here with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Ephraim Benti, Ephraim Benti, are you here? Yes, am I audible? Hi, Ephraim, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Smith? Great, great My to have, see you again. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Ephraim Benti and I'm from and thank you for this amazing chance and I will I'll be glad to work to work for this amazing uh, uh, amazing organization and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, next I'm going to call Bentia who they miss you. Bentiahu Dimasu. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So my name is Bantayo Demso. I'm from Ethiopia. And I'm happy for being a diplomatic intern in this organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bentiahu. Uh, Hamela Fanta. Hamela. Alemne Fanta, are you here? Yes, I am here, ma'am. Great. Uh, my name is Hermila, uh, Hermila Alemne, and I'm from Ethiopia. And I'm looking uh, forward to working with you and with my team to bring uh, the sustainable development goals to their achievements in hope we will succeed and look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Beth Bethlehem Casa Jambo, 
Bethlehem Jumbo Casa. Are you here? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. My name is Bethlehem, and I'm calling from Ethiopia. And I'm very excited to be part of this initiative and to see something that's actually not just in theoretical basis, but something that's also tackling what's happening on the actual ground. So hope to work with you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bethlehem. Anaf, Anafsi Aspau, Kumza, are you here? Anafsi Aspau, Kumza. Iru Salem Bile. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, great. So my name is Yaru Salim Belay. I'm dialing in from Ethiopia and I also look forward towards this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Sipara Getachau. Sipara Getachau. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. My name is Sipara Gitacho. I'm from Ethiopia at Sawa. And I'm thankful for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Bilkis Yusuf. Bilkis Yusuf, are you here? Bilkis Yusuf. Ibrahim Halilu. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good day to you all. Good day, Ibrahim. My yeah. name is Ibrahim Halilu. I'm dialing from Jigawa State of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Ibrahim, and welcome. I'm really happy to have you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mariam Abdurrahman. Mariam Abdurrahman. I think I saw Mariam. I'm here. Hello, Miriam. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening. I'm sorry, it's back here. We had a fire interruption. Oh, so that's my fine. name is Abdrahman from Sokoto, Nigeria. I'm grateful for this wonderful opportunity. You're welcome, Miriam. Miriam is um, also our peace and ethics advocate, and she's very enthusiastic about ending domestic violence. And um, we're very happy working with Mariam also on this project. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mariam. Chinyere Agu. Chinyere Agu. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Chinyere Agu. I'm good. From Abuja. Chinyere Agu from Abuja. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I may be here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome. Habiba Isiaka. Habiba Isiaka, are you here? Tosin Thomas. Like Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Um, mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I am Tosin Thomas from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, and I am happy for this um, great opportunity in working with a Billion Doors initiative. I promise to be a game changer to stand against um, drug abuse and domestic violence. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome, Ms. Tosin Thomas. Uchechi Obezi. 
Uchechi Obeze. Um, hi, good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry, it's dark here. You know, Nigerian power interruption and all. Okay, hi everyone. Nice to meet you guys. My name is Obeze Hello, Uchechi. Hi. Welcome, Ocheche. Thank you. So I'm dying Ocheche, from Lagos, Nigeria. Right. Thank you so much, um, Ocheche Obezi. Thank you. Damilere Alawode. Damilere Alawode. Damien Uzoma. Damien Uzoma. Yes, hi everyone. Hi. My name is Damian Chidozie Ozoma Wosu. I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm dialing from Igbo State, Nigeria, right from my village. Just yesterday, wow. the police came to arrest young, young men in my village who are involved in sniffing in some substances, some drugs. A whole lot of them, and I saw young men and women, and I wept. So when that was happening, I realized the reason why I must be part of this program. And I'm happy as a researcher, as a PhD student. I think my involvement in this program will bring a lot into this program, because I'll have to relate it to what I saw in my village, to what I've been doing, and that must have written about this. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, um, Damien. Thank you for that. Okay, that is all um, our teams for the domestic violence research. And um, now we are going to move on to the drug abuse research uh, teams. But I think what we're going to do at this point is we are going to allow um, Ms. Ashwarya to make her presentation on um, youth advocacy and the SDGs. And then after that, we'll still come back to this um, introduction of interns. I think that um, uh, be a bit more appropriate. Yes, um, Ms. Ajoro, do you want to invite? Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma. I was hoping you, you know, wrap that up. I, I'm so glad to, you know, see some of the interns, you know, give their um, welcome speech. Like, they were all so excited. One thing I noted was their excitement about participating in this program. They all, you know, showed so much commitment. And I really think they are. They're going to make, you know, they want to produce good results at the end of the day. And it's a good thing, like Chidozi mentioned, he witnessed firsthand the arrest of some youth who were, you know, um, using substance. And that shows that indeed it, it's happening. It's happening right under our noses. You know, so I'm, I'm really glad that um, they are willing to work. And unfortunately, we couldn't see some of their faces because it was always dark, you know, for them. <laughs> I'm glad. So um, at this move at this juncture, I want to um invite the United Nations Youth Representative, um, Her Excellency Aishwarya, to come give us a speech on um the youth advocacy and the SDG. I really want to hear from you, Ma. I believe that you have a lot in store for us today. So I'm going to invite you to take over and. Give us what you have tonight, ma. Good evening. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Greetings, everyone. Uh, greetings. Hello, hello. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello, Miss <laughs> Ali. Greetings, okay. greetings, distinguished guests. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, and fellow youth advocates. My name is Aishwari Narasimha Devra, and I am a youth representative for Medical Women's International Association, 
which is an NGO dedicated to <clears throat> empowering women in the field of medicine and also is affiliated with the United Nations Department of Global Communications. Uh, hence, I serve as a youth representative, NGO youth representative to uh, the Department of Global Communications. I thank the organizers for providing me the opportunity to present today. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. I am inspired uh, listening to the stories um, of all of the distinguished panelists and to uh, hear from the interns themselves. I congratulate all of you upon being selected to be a part of the initiative and wish you best of luck in all your endeavors. Um, so I will be sharing um, some background information about the sustainable urban goals as um, the as our moderator and Ms. Ali had mentioned earlier, and a little bit about the youth involvement at the United Nations as one subsection of youth advocacy. I will be sharing my presentation. So I will just share my screen with all of you. Uh, yes. No. Is everybody able to see my screen? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And if at any time, as um, Madam Moderator mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Also, please feel free to raise your hand or click on raise your hand as well, and we'd be delighted to answer your question. So, as you, um, as um, some of you may be aware of also the United Nations, but I'd like to ask all of you, what is the United Nations in your opinion? And you're welcome to share anything you wish to. Oh. Does anybody have any, would anybody like to answer? Please feel free to raise your hand. And I, if I could kindly request the organizers to help moderate only because with your apologies, um, I think it's a little hard to see for me only because the view is a little different. So if anybody's raising your hand, actually, please, Go ahead and uh, make your remarks. What is the UN in your opinion? Anybody? Okay. Yes, please go ahead. Anybody? Okay. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Okay, I'm still the moderator, but I think I'd like to answer this question. Of okay, course. the United Nations, I believe, was set up after the Second World War to maintain peace and security in the world due to the failure of the League of Nations. So, so 193 nations came together and um, the UN was formed to prevent future occurrences of world wars and to maintain peace and security in the world. And I think so far they've done a good job. Um, that's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, um... Ejiro, you are absolutely correct. So it was actually formed after World War II and with the League of Nations as a background. So just to um, start our conversation, the United Nations is a multilateral organization comprised of member states that meet to maintain peace and discuss global issues to find solutions. And as you mentioned yourself, um, uh, Madam Moderator, it was formed on October 24, 1945, and the UN just celebrated its 75th anniversary. Do apology for the mistake, but yes. So 75th anniversary. And the Secretary General is Antonio Guitares of Portugal. Um, and the UN also includes various agencies, funds and programs eradicated to poverty, establishing peace, education, climate change, and gender equality. And as even Ms. Ali had mentioned earlier, one entity includes the de uh, department, um, uh, um, I beg your pardon, the United Nations Economic and Social Council. And the UN also has headquarters in six different countries, as you can see listed here. And the official website of the UN is also listed there for your reference. And um, the secretariat will also be able to share this um, PowerPoint presentation with you later, so that way you can have access to all the information. All right, our next question I'd like to ask all of you What are the sustainable development goals? Uh, who would like to answer? And I, uh, you are welcome to share any thought you may have. It can be 
one word or it can be even two or three sentences. Please feel free to share any thoughts you may have on the sustainable development goals. Anyone? Anyone please raise your hand. All right, no problem, no problem. So the sustainable development goals are also known as SDG, uh, were agreed upon by member states of the United Nations in September 2015 that pertain to poverty, health, oh. education, gender equality, and climate change. They're also known as the Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Mm -hmm. You may hear this quite often, Global Goals, but the more used, the more conventional form is the Sustainable Development Goals or SDG for short. So they were a set of goals. And they are part of the UN 2030 Development Agenda, which focuses on the five Ps. And the five Ps include people, planet, partnerships, peace, and prosperity. These five themes are the part of are the cornerstone of the sustainable development goal. They are a continuation of the Millennium Development Goals that which were uh, agreed upon in, Sept in September 2000 and expired in 2015. And the SDGs, um, the Sustainable Development Goals include 17 goals with 169 targets and 230 indicators. So if you break it down, think of the 17 goals, then each of the goals have various targets. So that would uh, be um, the second level. So at the top, you have the goals. Then the second level, you have the targets. Then below the targets, you have the indicators. So think of it like a family tree or an organogram uh, when you break down the goals. And the indicators also are use, um, are a, it's a numerable measure to be, uh, used to uh, determine the progress of achieving the goals. And if uh, you, for more information, the UN has a wealth of uh, resources that you can peruse at your convenience on the goals. And now these are the 17 goals for reference. As you can see, they range from a variety of issues and also indicated there the Global Goals for Sustainable Development, its secondary name. So now, since many of you are focusing on drug abuse and domestic violence, um, what goals do you think they correlate to? So maybe um, I can help you start with the first one. Drug abuse we can see here is related to good health, correct? It's for your overall mental and physical well state of being, correct? So now, and yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thank you for your affirmation, Madam Moderator. Absolutely, and then of course um, there are other goals that are related to drug abuse, which also includes um, poverty as well. So that would be goal number one: eradicating poverty, and as well as um, good jobs and economic growth. It's because of you know lack of employment, perhaps people resorting to. Uh, drug um, trafficking or drugs and substance abuse. Um, so now, if we look at domestic violence, I would like to ask all of you, uh, fellow audience members, which sustainment temple goal do you think is correlated to domestic violence? And there are quite a few of them. So please feel free to state any of which you think are related to this topic, domestic violence. Anyone? Gender equality. Yes, yeah. absolutely, right? Goal number five. Which other goal do you think domestic violence is related to? Maybe reduced inequalities as well. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And these two are quite linked as well. Oh, I apologize. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, goal sophisticated <laughs> peace and justice. All right, I think... Uh, no problem. So yes, thank you very much um, to everyone who responded. You have, we have responsible ahead. consumption. Responsible consumption, domestic yeah. violence. Yes, yes, yes. No, you drug have, abuse, um, drug abuse. Okay. 
Honga. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And you have yeah, drug absolutely. abuse also. Oh, I apologize, sir. I'm so sorry. Please go ahead. After you, sir. All right. So, yes, you have 5, 10, 12. Yes, yes. Um, and oh. there are others. There are others. Over uh, if you have a relationship with domestic, go number one. It has covered yes. for those uh, opponents against people. Yeah. Yes, poverty. And um, I would do apologies. I'm, I'm unsure if uh, no, number two also has made reference to no hunger, but if so you are also correct. They are, they are related. Yes. yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Uh, uh, well, about, thank you very much. What about quality education? How to yes. all do think? I think education is uh, really important because it uh, stopped the using drug and violence against women. Am I right? You're, ab you're absolutely correct, sir. You're absolutely correct, uh, Mohsin. And um, yes, yes, I apologize for the intervention. Yes, you're absolutely correct because you do see that they're, they're all linked as well. There are, you know, there are very... <laughs> Um, they're very. There are some that are very much. You, there is a direct link with those indirect ones. And yes, I do agree. Um, like all of you, education definitely is very much crucial in combating domestic violence and uh, drug abuse. Absolutely, and the, it 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 is unfortunate because, um, as many of you know, if you do not know about drugs as well and the harmful effects um, of these substances. You know, then again, that is you. Then um, you unfortunately resort, and so yes, absolutely, education is also important, and that includes not just you know education schools, but informal education, uh, mass um, public inf dis uh, inf mass public um, dissemination programs um, as well. So thank you, thank you. Um, so thank you for your remarks, all of you. All did an excellent job in identifying goals related to your respective uh, projects. So now as we proceed on, as you know, there are various platforms uh, to take action. Now, uh, many of you are already taking action through, um, through this initiative and I applaud all of you for the work you have been doing and wish you uh, much success in your, in your respective endeavors. Uh, there are also various resources in addition to also educate others about the sustainable double goals, as well as learning more about them yourself. One is the world's largest lesson, and another one is the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, also known as SPSN, um, and also SDSN Youth, which is the one listed here for reference. The SDSN Youth is um, affiliated with many of the various youth advocacy initiatives, including urbanization, <clears throat> education for global citizenship, and uh, combating the effects of um, climate change. So this network, actually, some of you may have heard of before, is also another um, excellent platform for connecting with other global youth leaders in working towards finding solutions for the sustainable purposes. And SDSN itself, which is the umbrella organization, they're affiliated with Columbia uh, U the University in New York in the United States. So I highly recommend these two resources as well for also in using them as resources in your research. <laughs> And so now, just very briefly, to go through youth advocacy at the United Nations, and with due apologies in the interest of time, um, I will just go through quickly because there are many platforms of engagement at um, the UN. Um, however, this PowerPoint presentation hopefully will be available to you after. So please feel free to please feel free to peruse through the resources at your convenience. So now, as we can see, there. Are with the multiple agencies in the UN system, you have a youth program. Now, each youth program is affiliated again um, with the commitment that 
was uh, taken um, upon by member states at the UN in 1995, um, as stated in the World Program of Action for Youth, as you can see here, also known as um, WPAYY. Uh, now, this is a very, this is a pivotal, um, this is um, quite a, in, in, an important document in defining youth advocacy at the UN. As member states, um, in this document, it states that ah. member states recognize the need for youth participation um, and as mobilizers in achieving development in society. And the General Assembly declared August 12 to be International Youth Day. Furthermore, the Office of the Secretary General's Honorable Youth was created in 2013. This office that has been launching uh, dynamic campaigns as, um, throughout even the COVID-19 pandemic, also to gather youth participation from around the world and giving a voice um, for youth at the UN. Now, the office actually serves as in bringing the UN Charter to youth. That's actually the way it works. But it is a great mobilizer in also addressing what youth, including youth unemployment, um, education, how climate change also affects um, individuals, and um, eradicating poverty. And the current youth one is Jetma Vikramanayake of Sri Lanka. Now, uh, very briefly, again, with due apologies, um, some of the entities at the UN um, that have the youth participation um, engagement platforms include the United Nations Children Fund, also known as UNICEF. Some of you may be very, uh, many of you may be familiar with this um, entity. And some of the programs include Generation Unlimited, focusing on youth um, employment, youth ambassadors, and youth advocates. Some of whom, which you may know, as you have many um, public figures, uh, including Millie Bobby Brown, uh, as to raise awareness on bullying, they're all affiliated with uh, UNICEF. You also have the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, also known as UNCTAD, that offers a fellowship program and on uh, youth engagement, working through regional hubs. And you also have as the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, also known as DESA, but you have the UN Youth Delegate Program. So this actually is a very unique program in which member states um, have a youth representative in their respective delegations. So this is one way where youth have a very active role in uh, policy and in intergovernmental uh, negotiations. You also have the interagency network on youth and development, which focuses on capacity building. And as you can see, these are some of the youth delegates who have served um, their terms in recent years. You also have the Department of Global Communications. This is the department I had mentioned earlier through which I have had um, the most engagement with. Now, this one, you have the you at the DGC Youth Representatives Program, as indicated here, which includes youth between the ages of 18 through 32 who are um, their respective um, youth, uh, youth representatives and NGOs that are affiliated to this department. Um, within the program, you also have the Youth Steering Committee, which serves as an advisory uh, between youth representatives all around the world and the Department of Global Communications. And again, with your apologies, <laughs> I, you know, I'm more than delighted to have uh, by, um, any bilateral discussions with you afterwards, given the interest of time. Please feel free again to uh, refer to the material here at your convenience. You also have the United Nations Development Program, also known as UNDP, which many of you may be familiar with. Uh, you have one program known as the Global, uh, I beg your pardon, Youth Global Program for Sustainable Development and Peace. Um, and this, this entity also focuses 
on youth working towards the implementation of the 2030 agenda, which focuses on peace and uh, security issues. And also the Security Council Resolution 2250, I beg your pardon. Uh, we're almost there, we're almost there, everyone. <laughs> the next entity is the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, also known as UNESCO. UNESCO has a, a youth forum, which is in Paris usually um, every year. Uh, the entity also encourages uh, blogs and sharing stories online. Um, that has also been a Catholic force in youth participation through this entity. We also have UN Habitat, which is in Nairobi, Kenya, and focusing, of course, on urbanization, um, community development in cities, and in safe um, uh, habitats for all. And then you also have UNFPA, which is United Nations Population Fund, focusing on uh, population, demographic, reproductive rights. The youth program it has is right here. Uh, which has been quite uh, pivotal in teaching um, youth um, with their fellow um, with their fellow contemporaries on population okay. growth. Uh, and I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you at this point. I'm really sorry. No, no, no problem. That's no problem. I apologize. Okay. I was trying. Yes. No, no. I... <laughs> I understand. A lot of room there for the youth, you know, a lot of room there for youth participation um, in various agencies at the UN. We, we, we are so, so glad we can have all of this. So, okay, okay. We're almost done. Okay. No problem. If you wish, I'm, I'm, I, I'll, um, with, um, yes. So thank you very much. And I apologize again um, for <laughs> uh, the very no detailed remarks. Yes, yes. But thank I you so much. Like um, thank you so much, Ashwarya. It's always a pleasure listening to you. You know, I always say that, you know, we'll make the slides available to everyone. And thank yeah, yeah. you so much for making out time. Thank I always you. learn from you every time I listen to you. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so, so thank much. You so thank, much. You. Thank, thank you, thank you yeah. very much. And I would like to convey my gratitude to all the organizers for providing me the opportunity to speak. And I, I wish all of you best of luck in your endeavors and look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much. I pass it back to you, Madam thank Moderator. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Arashraya. You're really grateful. Yes. Um, please remember, if you have any questions, you can just signify by raising your hand, OK? or you can use the chat box and give your questions for any of us. So we really, really anticipate you asking questions in any area you not there on. So our excellency, yes, we know you still have an unfinished business with our intern. So I'd like to welcome you again so that you can, so that you can um, um, complete the program. Okay. Excellency. So, um over to you. Okay, so I'm just going to call out very quickly. Please, let's make this as quick as possible because um, we don't want to keep everyone very, very late here, especially our um, friends in Ethiopia because it's really late over there. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly um, do a roll call on the drug abuse uh, interns. And I will start with um, Shingwe Princess Uchendu, you can just unmute your video and your mic and just tell us your name and where you're dialing in from. Shingwe Princess Uchendu. Right, okay. Abidin Hamisu. Abidin Hamisu, are you here? Obin Nachima. Obin Nachima, are you here? Okay, Orinya, Orinya. Orinya, yes. are you here? Yes. Good evening. evening. Uh, my name is Orinya Agbaji. I'm dialing in from Abuja, Nigeria. And I'm really excited to be part of this initiative. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. 
Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Orinya. Kingsley Kefas. <clears throat> Kingsley Kefas. Uh, Umar Sali Anka. Umar Sali Anka. Ayodele Adene. Are you delayed? Good evening. Sorry, I had a little issue with my light. All right, so I'm Ayodele Adinayi. I'm calling in from Kano State here in Nigeria. Uh, it's my pleasure being part of this team. Thank you so much, Ayodele. Thank you. Salisu Jibril Ali. Yes, ma'am. And good evening, everyone. My name is Alex Ali. I'm joining from Canada, Nigeria. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Salis, and welcome. Uh, Viginus Naji. Viginus Naji. Okay, I'm going to call on Godwin Monday. Godwin, Mr. Godwin Monday is quite exceptional. Um, he has experience working with the NDL, NDLEA. Uh, Godwin Monday, I hope you're here with us today. Yes, good evening. I'm Monday Godwin. Good evening. And I'm dialing in, I'm dialing in from Port Harcourt River State. Uh, it's a pleasure being here and uh, it's a pleasure working with you guys. Uh, I hope at the end of the day, we achieve the goal based on drug abuse and the rest of it. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Godwin. We hope to learn also from you as well. Onwekwe um, Innocent. Unwokwe Innocent Namdi. Mr. Namdi, are you here? Ola Yinka Ade Tunji. Ola Yinka Ade Tunji, are you here? Okay. Awa Rabi U. Good evening, all. Good evening. I'm our review. I'm Dalin from Plateau State, Nigeria. I'm glad to be part of this project and also looking forward to contribute my own cutter. Thank and you. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, much Mukhtar, Mukhtar Ibrahim. Mukhtar Ibrahim. Emmanuel Noah. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, Emmanuel Noah. Good evening, my, my name is Emmanuel Noah Adams. I'm dialing in from Nigeria. I'm in Lafia, Nasagawa State. And I'm happy to be part of this project. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. And welcome. Thank you. Adamu, Adamu Musa. Thank you. Adamu Musa. Thank you very can much. Can you enable your everyone. video as well so we can see you, please? Adamu Musa. Yes. Uh, is the video available now? Yes. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm Adam Musa Kaluma, calling from Bauchi, state of Nigeria. It is indeed a great pleasure of mine to serve this, uh, this organization. And I will give my own quota to assume we achieved the targets and goals of this uh, organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Barry Fordham Don Mata. Barry Fordham Don Mata. Ganyat Akimumi. Ganyat Akimumi, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Good evening, ma'am. 
Good evening. My name is Akumi Janias Abiyoji, calling from Ede Oshun State, Nigeria. I'm highly honored to be given this great opportunity. Thank you. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ganga Jamin. Ganga Jamin. Indume Sandrine Moko. Indume. Okay. Greetings. Thank you very much. I'm calling Zimu Sandrine Mufu. I'm dining in from Cameroon. It's really a great pleasure working with this team. And I'll put in my best to say no to drop a bit in our local community. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we also have um, Leonie Kenny. Leonie Kenny, are you here today? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. I'm called Kenny. I'm from Very excited to be part of this. Okay, we could barely hear you, um, Leone. Welcome. Uh, Leone is dialing in from Cameroon. Um, okay, welcome, Leone. Uh, Getnet Abraham. Getnet Abraham. Hello, everyone. Getnet Abraham. Yes, I'm here. I'm getting it, Abraham, from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Thank you for these chances. I am very happy for the part of this diplomatic endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome. Magdes Gezachu. Magdes Gezachu. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is. Okay, my name is Magnus Gzatcho and I'm from uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm uh, great and happy to be part of this team. I hope we will have a good time for the next three months. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome, Magnus. Um, Dr. Dr. Yodit Bekele. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Yodit from Ethiopia. It's a great honor to meet you all, and thank you for the great presentation. And I'm ready to contribute and look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. Yodit. Thank you. Cynthia Yahu Delelen. Yahu Delelen. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening. My name is Evelyn. My name is Evelyn from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and I'm glad to work with you guys. And I'd like to thank you for thank giving you me so this much chance. and welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, Meraf Shafero. Billy Suma Woku. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, that is the end of um, our um, our interns for the drug abuse and um, all of this um, 46 interns are going to split into are going to be split into two. Uh, some are going to research on drug abuse, and some are going to research on domestic violence, and then we are going to later connect these two and um, understand and establish a relationship. Uh, so yes, thank you very much, and this is uh, the end of it. Over to you, Madam Moderator, Ambassador Ejaro. <laughs> um, well, okay. Thank you, Excellency. You have done justice to all of that. And passionate youth today, I must say. I am so, I'm so excited to, you know, 
see them speak with so much passion and like I mentioned earlier, a commitment to work. And I have no doubt, Her Excellency, that they will deliver. I, I, I believe so, I believe so strongly. Thank you so much. And a, a congratulations to each and every one of you, our interns, who began a new journey. And um, I'm sure you are ready for the task that lies ahead of you. Um, great strides you've made so far. And we look forward to working with you and ensuring that we get the maximum result possible. And with this, we are um, going to have Ambassador Zakari Gimba Hassan come to give us an overview of a billion dollars initiative. He's going to tell us what we are about and why we do what it is that we do. That's important because I know some of us have been wondering, okay, so how come they exist? What did they do? Why did they come up with such programs as this? So um, I'm going to invite His Excellency Ambassador Kyrie Gimba Hassan to come give us an overview and our closing remarks as well. Ambassador, are you there? Are you there? Yes. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening. Ambassador Ejiro. Uh, thank you for the journey so far. Welcome, thank you for the uh, job well done. So far, so good. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency, the chairperson of ABDI. Uh, good evening, uh, our distinguished special guest. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for being part of uh, this uh, program. Uh, as earlier said, stated, my name is Zachary Jumba Hassan. Uh, I will be doing an overview of uh, the app. So, because my system is having a problem and sharing the screen of uh, my brother, is uh, hack, So, I use the screen to share and do the presentation. Okay. Ambassador, please could you speak up a little? We can barely hear you. I'm guessing it's network okay. issues, but uh, yes, I'm not so sure. the talk is yes. a bit bad. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me let me even share my own screen since it seems it's one screen is having issues. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, a billion dollars initiative. Um, Ambassador, are you sharing your screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, yes. we can see. Can you see the screen of this hack? This hack. This hack, look at the map. I'm sharing the screen. Is it? Is your screen hanging? Because we can't see it. We can't see your screen, so uh, I'm guessing you're having technical yes. issues over there. It's, it's technical issue. Okay. Can you see it now? Step. 
So you have many pages open. Um, yes. I think we are there now. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Just let me manage this. Not how I wanted. I had wanted it to be, but please, uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, let's just manage it. Please, can we um, limit this? Um, sorry, excuse me. Can we limit this presentation to 15 minutes because it's very, very late. Um, um, a lot of our guests want to um, exit. So please, if we can try to uh, just limit the time. Okay, so Ambassador, you have just 10 minutes, please. Thank okay, you. I will try to do it less than 15 minutes. Thank you. The topic of my presentation is an overview of, of a billion dollars initiative. So uh, I will start with the conception and part of ABDI. ABDI basically started as a community school, Zulfa International School through the philanthropic effort of three individuals, Hajja Aisha Tadamu, uh, Hajja Farida Adamu, and Hajja Rabi Atahil, sole aim of ensuring that the less privileged children in Kaduna State in Northern Nigeria have access to quality education. The ABDI is a non-governmental organization that is also non-political, non-religious, non-ethnic, no racial and non discriminatory in all its forms and locations. Our membership cut across African countries and other continents with a cardinal in creating the desired change in Africa and around the world through harnessing and utilizing the knowledge, wisdom, strengths, and talents of the Africa. The advancement of African people and humanity in general. The vision of ABDI to provide all humanity with access to appropriate equal opportunities in health, education, and employment of trade. The vision of ABDI to become the first generation to end extreme poverty and the most determined generation in history um, to end life. Ambassador, sorry to interrupt you. Please, could you speak up a little? Right. No. Can you hear me now? Yes, <coughs> much better. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I was at the point of division. The vision of Abdi is to become the first generation to end extreme poverty and the most determined generation in history to end tribalism and corruption and the last generation to be threatened by poor education, insufficient health, on equal opportunities and poor standard of living. Our core values at Abdi, underpinning everything we do, are six core values. One, integrity. Two, advocating on behalf of the poor and vulnerable. Three, independence from cultural or religious affiliation. Four, professionalism. Five, respect for diversities. And six, Act without consideration of personal gains. Um, sorry Partners. to interrupt you again, Ambassador, but we, we can't see your screen anymore. So um, you can still go ahead, but we just cannot see your screen anymore. Okay. Okay. The partners majorly we have different partners that uh, we are working with in achieving our set goals and. Uh, objectives. One of them is the action aid, uh, end violence against children, sustainable development goals, which are 17 numbers that our, one of our best speakers spoke about a while ago, global uh, globeethics.net, the UNDP, UNODC, UN Women. These are our major partners in our effort. Then some of our activities and projects that we have undertaken 
and the ones we are doing uh, in recent times. Uh, in 2018, uh, our team, led by the chairperson herself, visited internally displaced widows and a community called Kadokuchi in Abuja, federal capital territory of Nigeria, and also an advocacy for ethic, eth ethical behavior and morality among students in Nigerian schools who have been doing that since 2013. We have also been engaged in, uh, in workshops on grassroots campaign on good citizenship, that is what we call CGCGC. So that has been also in September 2018. We also engage in education and enlightenment programs in many schools since 2013, especially focusing on distribution of learning materials, teaching of importance of education, and stressing the need to imbibe ethical learning by the students of the institutions we visit. We also involve, uh, engage in development of frameworks for reuniting abandoned children, especially children from age zero to 15 years with their parents through this mentality of promoting family reintegration since 2013. The Billion Dollars Academy is another effort we put in place to ensure that children go to school, especially in Northern Nigeria. We also engage in supporting the less privileged children since 2013. There is also a program we call Touch a Life Campaign which we use by visiting orphanages and hospitals to donate foods, clothes, medication, sanitary products, etc., etc., to the people that need them most. We have been doing that since 2018. We also engage in grassroots advocacy against corruption, drug abuse, and violence since September 2018. Abdi also, uh, we also have a program we call the Future is Focus campaign in many schools. Uh, the last one we visited Bayaro University in Kano State, Nigeria. Then, as part of our program, we do the restoration of the restoration and induction of global ambassadors. That one was done last year, which 2020, early 2020. We also we also uh, did peace and ethics advocate uh, workshops. That was also in December last year. The Abdi internship program also happened last year. We have series of uh, internship potential candidates where our team of experts we are assembled and interview potential uh, uh, interns from various countries, including Nigeria, including uh, Iran, including Ethiopia, etc., etc. We uh, most of whom are those that qualified that we are uh, doing their uh, that we are doing their inauguration today. Then uh, Ebilon does also. We have a program also called uh, that recently, that was also in January, uh, led by Her Excellency, the Chairperson uh, uh, Farida Ali Adam. Uh, it was tagged et uh, Ethical Leadership and Advocacy Workshop for Ambassadors. That happened, that was our last uh, program we had recently before today's event. Then there are some of the programs of uh, the 17 SDG goals. We selected a song which we focus on in order to kind of uh, give us a broader perspective on how to achieve set targets and on that we have one of the goals we have is goal one which is uh, no poverty then we also have goal one goal one target one which is eradicate extreme poverty in all its forms then we also engage in working on goal 3.5 which is prevent and treat substance abuse which one of our guest speakers spoke about a while ago. Then we also engage in activities of goal 16, which are about peace, justice, and strong institutions. Then we also involve in activities of goal 16, target two, which is to uh, protect children from abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and violence in all its forms. Then we have goal 16, target five, that is ensuring sustainability and reduce corruption and bribery in all its ramifications. And then goal 16, which is strengthen partnership of global governance, of course, leaded, uh, headed by the United Nations Development Program, which is a kind of the 
another body that's overseeing the Millennium Development Goals, which are 17. So I uh, work with uh, both state and non-state actors to see how we harness efforts in order to achieve uh, the 17 goals of the MDGs, basically uh, these ones that we have selected uh, in particular. So basically, uh, as part of time, due to time, let me just round up and just rush to the conclusion. Uh, at the billion dollars, in conclusion, at the billion dollars initiative, we are for everyone, the children, the youth, the elderly, the disabled, the widow, the vulnerable, the less privileged, and even the privileged. We are here to give back our knowledge, talents, and other supports for free to those who need it. Also, we have also resolved to continuously fashion out deliberate, concrete, and concerted efforts to form strong, practicable, and sustainable partnerships and synergies with the United Nations organization in particular, its agencies, state and non-state actors on the global uh, arena in order to continuously pursue and achieve our set goals and targets as enshrined in our mission and vision for the overall benefit of the youth around the world, in particular, and humanity in general. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a summary of the brief of the Abilon Doors Initiative. Uh, once again, I want to apologize for some of the hitches we've got into to uh, the problems with my uh, uh, system network. I believe for the network here, we know in Africa we have uh, this data issue. Sometimes the network fluctuates anyhow, and it embarrasses uh, people so uh, unexpectedly. So I want to apologize for sincerely for the hitches. No Thank you problem, very much Ambassador. Problem. You can you give us a closure in that. Or... Yeah. I think I think Ajora can you. you can you can close okay. the occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador, for that awesome presentation. We are sorry about the network issue. Sometimes this cannot be avoided. But thank you. We did massively well. Thank you so much. And I'm sure our interns and for as many invitees that we have have learned um, one or two things as regarding what a billion dollars initiative stands for. On that note, um, we have come to the end of this ceremony. I want uh, before, to- Before before we close, I would just like to invite Meza Hadera from Ethiopia, just one last of our interns. I think when okay. I called her, she wasn't exactly um, close by. Meza Hadera, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello. My Hello. name is Hi. My name is Maza Hadara from Ethiopia. And nice to meet you all. I can't wait Thank to you. work with you. Great to have you. Great to have you, Maza. Uh, and welcome nice to, to Abelian Doors Initiative. Thank you. <laughs> Good to have you on board. Welcome. Okay, so I'm a special thanks to all our speakers. Um, you've done so well tonight. I believe everyone has learned something. I personally have learned a lot. Um, I also want to appreciate the founder and chairperson of the Billion Doors Initiative, Her Excellency Mayu, are uh, doing so much for us, and we are so grateful. You know, we are sitting here because you brought this vision. On that note, I sincerely want to thank you on behalf of the Billion Doors Initiative team members. We appreciate everything you're doing for us. And we know that we're just starting, but we're definitely going to get there. And to all our interns, thank you for participating. You're welcome on board. Um, thank you to all invitees, um, other ambassadors and advocates for the presence in this meeting tonight. We made it a success. We are really, really glad you stayed with us this far. Um, from on behalf of a billion dollars initiative, on behalf of the founder and our team members, we say thank you for participating and remember to always be the change that you desire to see. So from all of us here tonight, we say thank you and goodbye.
Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ashwarya. Thank you, Ashwarya. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll Thank speak you. some more. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, to everyone. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh, we're sorry. We could not take questions. Actually, really good. So, thank you, Honorable Said Sagir Ahmed. Uh, if he's still here, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you making time. And the country director, Aisha Naid, if she's still here. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> And um, let's see who do we have here. <laughs> Ambassador Naseba Ismail, you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Ambassador Zachary. Thank you, Your Excellency, oh, okay, Honorable Segir. Honorable Segir, thank you so much. <laughs> if you can hear me. <laughs> thank you, oh, Honorable thank Commissioner. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Bethlehem. Good night. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Ambassador Zachary, thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Good night. Okay, Ambassador Ijar, I would say goodbye, good night, and thank you so much for everything you have done today. You have done excellently amazing. <laughs> I'll thank tell you, you more much. about how much you have done over the phone. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Mohsin from much. Iran, thank you so much. We actually did call out your name, but uh, I don't think you were um, online then. But thank you for coming uh, and welcome to A Billion Doors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And in Iran, it's midnight, I think. Yes, it's midnight. Oh, and wow. <laughs> Wow, so sorry for keeping you up. You're, you're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Ambassador Zachary, good night. Well done. Thank you for your job. Well done, Your Excellency. Thank you, Honorable uh, Ambassador Ejiro. Thank you also. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Hello. Hi, Sweden.